Well, Trina, a, uh, another day at council, eh? I know, it's another uh, another council meeting, Chad. That's right. Yeah, well, we're getting close to the end of the year, so. We are. And finally, I think we're probably uh, getting some sort of uh, feeling that we might be starting to get a bit of traction. Uh, it was good today because we actually had the annual report as part of the, the business paper. We did, paper. that's right, yes, which sort of highlighted some of the issues which are already out there in the community. Uh, we had a, a report from our auditor which highlighted the fact that, you know, we can't keep on going the way we are. We, are, we know that and, uh, and, of course, now that we're in a position that we are, we'll be in a better position to... Uh, to try and take some actions that will, over a period of time, will put us back into a, a much more financially viable proposition. So, the, you know. And the annual report is out there for everybody to read. There's That's 225 right. pages of fabulous information if anyone's That's having right. a bit of difficulty falling asleep. If you want to cure insomnia, it's the way to go. <laughs> right? But we shouldn't joke about it because really it is one of the most significant documents that we as a council can produce. It's our way of reporting back to our community. It's our way of, of informing the community as what's actually what's been going on, how we as a council have functioned. And this is an interesting one because it's half of our council and half of the previous council. So, you know, we, we look at this, we learn from it, and we make changes and adjustments and get ready for 2023. Well, I think it's highlighted the, uh, the fact that there needs to be some long-term financial plan that, uh, that takes into the fact that we can't keep on making a loss of approximately $5 million a year. No business can do that, and essentially we're running a business on behalf of the community. So, you know, there will be steps yeah. taken over time which uh, will be b <coughs> measured and balanced to, to achieve that outcome. And our quarterly budget review is always really important in relation to that. It, that is where we can actually see how we're travelling at the time. So, And it was good to see some real, you know, um, in in <coughs> pardon me, uh, see people inquiring as to what was actually happening in that quarterly review because unless we keep our... Uh, our attention to what's going on. It, it's very easy to get out of hand without uh, knowing what's going on. So, That's yeah. right. And then we had the demerger issue. The This is something that we've been discussing as a council for some time and trying to understand the, the need for a, a business case as will be required in order to go forward and actually put in a formal request for the demerge. Look, and, you know, based on the fact that the... the uh, Propositions that were put to us, we've decided to go down the, the road with the Newcastle University and uh, Joseph Drew in preparing a, a, a business case, which will look at all the options that exist, uh, what the uh, impediments are to uh, to uh, Snowy Valley's council and the uh, opportunities that exist for demerger. It's uh, we want an awards and all uh, presentation and, and part of the reason we went down the path of the uh, Newcastle proposition was the engagement that will occur with the community, right. staff, councillors and, uh, and all those who have an input into the future of Snowy Valleys Council or the two demerged entities. So but we've got to put it to yeah. bed for once and for all. We can't... Uh, but it's not just about putting it to bed, Chad, because once we actually get this business case done, what it's going to enable council, whether it's Snowy Valley's council, Tumut council, Tumbarumba council, it is actually going to be, I suppose, a little bit like what used to be known as a 360 review, where we look at the operations, we look at staffing, we look at services, and we actually have a bit of an understanding of, of what it is that we're talking about. Because at the moment, we're talking about a lot of wants and a lot of wishes, but this business case, even despite whether or not what happens with the change of, if there's going to be a change of government next March, well, and it, they it want really a plebiscite. Well, it really doesn't matter. It, no. it comes back to the, the fact that there's a process that uh, council has to go through to uh, put this before the government. One, we have to present, prepare a business case. Two, we've got to give it to the minister to, who's got 28 days to refer it to the uh, Boundaries Commission and the Boundaries Commission have got to go through the process of evaluating that proposition and report back to the minister. Yeah. And th this is not going to happen in 10 no. minutes. It's There's a, a time frame associated with this and I'd be surprised if we get an outcome one way or the other by possibly September of next year, to be quite honest. Well, Based the on the fact that the Boundaries Commission is not constituted as yet, there's two vacancies. There's an election coming up in March 
and of course who knows what the outcome will be so there's a lot of imponderables here but at least the process has started that's right. and, and the that's business the case thing. will be started in, in right. january and we ir irregardless we'll get a benefit out of that for that's the community right. generally right. talking of benefits chaff we we actually allocated what was it around thirty thousand thirty thousand dollars today to sponsorship yep. across the Snowy Valleys Council, which is you know it's, it's great to see people you know who drive in community events and and uh, facilities in the community and, and council's not there to do it for them but it's there to provide assistance and help in them achieving their outcomes and and look if we can get the as a council we can get the community more involved in in driving their own future, I think that's got to be a plus, not and only look, for the community, but for yeah. council generally. And I think, you know, there were 10, 10 events that we're actually sponsoring across the Snow Valleys Council from Adlong, Batlow, Cancoban, well, Tumbarumba and Tumut. We haven't, uh, we've spread ourselves across the whole local we government have. area, which is important, you know, it's not just focused and a on one area. And a different range of activities, right, Chef. Yeah. Mind you, I am not doing the fitness endurance one. Um, I think I'll leave that to someone. I'm sure oh, you'll... I'd probably participate in that, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I think I'll do Carols by Candlelight. You can do the Tumbrumba Radio. Oh, yeah. Well, there was a suggestion I might enter in as a contestant, but I don't. Th right. I think those days are probably gone. And there's yeah. a couple of cycle classics in there sure. as well. So, you know... Well, and, talking and about shows. cycle track uh, uh, propositions, tracks the and Tracks and trails. trails has come up today, which is a huge opportunity for growing our community. And not, it's not just about new ones, no. it's about the, the ones that we have that we can really continue to develop and, and promote better than we have been and give some ownership to those people who have vested interest in them because, you know, as I said, we've got a, it's not about the council doing everything, it's about the council being part of the community. And, and look, after all, that's why we're here, is to foster and nurture our communities. And the, um, the actual document is out for public exhibition. If so you've got nothing else to do, you can well, read 257 pages of it. But it's really good reading, to it be quite is, honest. with pictures. Yeah. So that's even that's better. Right, yeah. But a lot of people across the community actually participated either um, during the coming, along, coming yeah. along to consultation or even via Zoom. So please take the time to have a look at the document. The thing that impressed me most of all, as Chaff was saying, this isn't just about the, the tracks and trails that, that council can actually participate in, in helping to construct. This is about identifying existing trails or, or even trails and tracks that have gone all around Australia, but we just need to start doing better signage. We need to give people the opportunity to know where the human hobble track already is and how it links in. So look, one of the big pluses that's come out of it is identified the huge potential and the existing trails that are out there, some mm. of which you know, I'm sure the majority of our community wouldn't be aware of. And look, once we get that out there, that, that this is a great place to come yeah. enjoy yourself. There's a number of different activities you can embark upon in our local government area. It's got to be a plus. So please have a look at it. It is out on public exhibition. We need the community to take ownership of this. This isn't our plan and it's not something that's going to sit on a shelf. We need the community to be a part of We've it. We've got enough things that sit on the shelf, Trina. We've just <laughs> got to get out and make it happen. And that's what Elf it comes on the shelf. To. Christmas that's is coming. Right. That's right. Little River. Little River Road. Goobragandra. Goobragandra. I know, it's, it's that look, exciting? Look, it, it, it's got huge potential up there, but we yeah. need to make sure that we've done go about it in the right way that we fully understand okay. what the ramifications of ad hoc decisions are and have been in the past look yeah. in, unless we do that we'll end up with something that's a mishmash of, of opportunity lost or potential opportunities it, it's got to have a long-term program of development because the the opportunity is enormous and we're not going to see it destroyed because we've gone about it in a haphazard sort of way. And I think the thing that we are really mindful of is that environmentally, yes, there is a beautiful river that runs through it. And we need to maintain we that. We need to maintain it. We also need to make sure that the development that is going in complies and that, that there's only complying development up there. So, you know, we did have a public forum today and people raised concerns which we listen to, but we also need to be looking at how, how do we ensure that everybody out there gets the best opportunity and that there is fair and consistent decision making. And look, as I said, it comes back to ad hoc development without any long-term plan or objective. And, 
and as such the council deferred decision on the proposal that was before us with a view to heading off down that trail and gathering that information, coming up with the best way forward. That's and, right. And you know, I think that's the best outcome that we could have expected in light of the, the issues that have been raised up there. So that's right. Make the that's right decision, that's right. not a fast decision. That's right. And yeah. if it takes us a little bit longer, well, so be it. Uh, New GM, Chef. Yeah, great. Good man. He seems Finally to, we to have he one. certainly seems to have his uh, head around the financial implications and also the way the organisation run. I've only been here for two and a half weeks, but it's good to see that he's he's travelled around the uh, local government area, got a good understanding yeah. of what's going on uh, as best you can in two and a half weeks. <laughs> but I think but I think it was a you know it was a big ask some of the questions that people right. were asking. But, but he fielded them quite well. Did. That's right. He and, did, and it was so. good to see the staff participation today. What we've yeah. been trying to do is engage our staff in. And uh, contributing to the, the better outcome of a, a council meeting and, and council decision making because, you know, we don't have the prerogative of the right decisions all the time. No. Other people have got points of view that, that at some point in time, possibly, you know, your elected me members may not have even considered. So, well, you know, let's be honest, Chaff, if you've right. got a toothache, you don't go to the mechanic. And as Why council, not? well, as councillors, we weren't elected and suddenly became knowledgeable on all things including planning uh, and, and finance. So and this is where we rely on our staff and the quality of our staff to advise us. If we us. can build up that confidence yeah. within the organisation that people can say yeah. what's on their mind without any names or any pack drill, that, that will okay. only lead to better decision making process on behalf of our whole community. Exactly. Now, December is, is only like 10 days away or Christmas. something. No, just that December. That was last Christmas. Just December, I know. But look, the next council meeting is a little bit earlier. So for those... 8th of December, I yeah, think. Yeah, absolute avid, diehard people who... Don't who miss it. <laughs> it's riveting more stuff to watch. Who log in relentlessly to watch it live. It'll be on um, December the 8th, not the following week. Otherwise, you'll be looking at a blank wall and think that we've all taken off. And then there, at this point, <laughs> there is no meeting in January. Although we'll still be working pretty hard. That's right. We'll be yeah. working assiduously behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so look, it, it's I, you know I think today's been a good day. It's been a, a uh, I think there's been a slow transition over a period of time, and, and we're getting that bonding exercise going, which is great. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So and okay, there's it, it take everything takes time, but yeah. yeah. So bring on December. Yep, and Christmas. And New Year. And New Year. And, and, let's, and, and Australia let's, Day. Uh, we, oh, I was led to believe that we have s at least 34 participants for citizenship on Australia wow. Day, which is, you know, it's, it's heartening news. It's amazing. It really yeah, yeah. 34 people. Yeah. Yeah. So Better yeah. get it right this year, Chef. Oh, well. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a f for a few <laughs> slips. What is it? The slip that picks oh. the cup in the lip. So, yeah, Do you know yeah. what? It's, it's called being human. So yeah. Australia Day 2023. We want everybody to get out there and celebrate what's beautiful about being part of Australia. And we want to celebrate every town That's in right. our community. This this idea that you know we're, uh, yeah. you know, we're, we need to foster that idea of community yeah. ownership and and being proud of where we actually live within our local government area. And so build on the longest continuous right. living culture sure. in the whole world. That's right. We're yeah. lucky. We live in the best country we in the world. We could have learned a bit if we'd have bothered to ask when we, we turned up. I yeah. think we're rambling. I think that's, that's it. That's right. Yeah. That's a sign <laughs> of old age. Thanks, Chef. I know. Right. Right. Thanks, Katrina. Yeah.